Hey, Deserve Listeners, Love is Blind, Season 2. Let's watch. Who got me that? Yeah. My oh, ex-girlfriend. Oh, God, I knew it. As soon as he said, who got me that, I was like, oh, Jesus. Okay, so she's going through his stuff, and she finds a personalized item of some kind and says, who got you this? He says, oh, an ex-girlfriend of mine. And she's like, oh, there we go. And so she doesn't seem particularly upset about it. We know that this is an issue for her. Now, she could totally say, Look, it's really great that you have this, but could you get rid of it? Because if if I see, it's going to trigger me. You know, the thing about jealousy that you're totally okay to do is to own it and to not blame someone else. She could totally say, "Honey, I know that you, I'm guessing having this does not mean that you still are in love with this past partner. I'm sure you having this isn't some sort of affront to our relationship." I'm sure that you having this isn't some sort of like you're pining away from her, uh, so pining away for her. But for me, when I see that, if if that's going to be around, it's going to trigger me. Uh, like even though it has nothing to do with anything, that is going to trigger me. Could you please get rid of it for my sake? I'm so sorry. If this means a lot to you, because it looks like a really nice thing that she got for you, but it's going to trigger me and I'm sorry. It's going to make me jealous. It's going to, I'm going to get hurt. I'm going to get scared. And then I'm going to have to deal with that. I might get in a bad mood about it. So could you do it? That is fine. You know, like, Hey, when we go to the last time we went to a party, you were talking with that other woman for a long time. I know that you're not doing anything with her and I trust you, but it triggers me. And I, you know, I don't know what's going on with me. I don't know why, but it triggers me and then I get in a super bad mood and it, it just ruins my night. And that's not your fault. This is my, you know, problem that, you know, I guess now you, and, and I've tried, believe me, I've tried to clamp down on the feelings. I've tried to say, everything's fine. Stop freaking out. But it just doesn't work because I, I just, it, I can't control it, particularly in those kind of contexts. Maybe it's because of things happening to me. I pass, I'm guessing it is. So could you please, that is fine. But to say objectively, you're, you're wrong and you're a bad partner for holding on to this box is, you know, he could debate that, right? He could be like, well, if you had something from your ex that meant a lot to you, that'd be fine with me. I don't, I don't think this is objectively like a, an immoral act. <laughs> is that a problem? I don't know yet. It's a watch holder. It's still a gift. It's a personalized gift. This meant something to her and to you. I, I just wish she would talk more from her feelings instead of she's coming across like objectively it's wrong. And she's done this before. And, you know, that's just not fair to someone else. He could be like, you're reading into it. It's not true. <laughs> I mean, and you're not going to get any kind of favors from someone you know like if i walk up to my wife and um something was making me jealous or something and i was just like how come you still have this thing like what's wrong with you she's not going to be super enthusiastic about getting rid of it she's going to be like why am i being attacked right now whereas if i go to her and say this has nothing to do with you you're a wonderful person and a good partner but that thing triggers me and I don't know why, but could you could you please get rid of it? Then, so on the first example, hostility causes hurt, and then hurt causes distance, and, and distance causes stubbornness. But if you present your vulnerability, then the person, because they care and they have empathy, they will say, huh, so if I get rid of it, I can solve your problem? I can make you feel better by taking this action? I don't want to get rid of that thing, but I really don't want you to suffer. <laughs> because I love you and I have empathy, even if I didn't, if I wasn't, you know, in a relationship with you, I still human to human don't want you to suffer. And you just presented me with a why in the road where I can go one direction and cause more suffering. I can go in the other direction, and cause less suffering. Humans that aren't psychopaths will all, you know, generally speaking, if they're, if they have enough information, will be compelled to take the action of not suffering, particularly for their partners. So, I worry that this is going to aggravate their relationship because he's he seems to take it okay. And, you know, if I, if I were his therapist, I would say, well, if she's not going to come into therapy, you have to read 
between the lines. She's jealous and she's scared and she's not being very nice about it, but maybe just respond to what you think is between the lines. That was a birthday gift. That means even more. <sighs> I don't believe in keeping gifts from exes. I don't believe in staying friends with exes. The fact that he has like a whole personalized gift is like weird. Yeah, there's that word, weird. What What's weird about it? Someone that he had a relation, was in a relationship with gave him a gift. It's not, so it's that objectiveness to it. It's weird, meaning it's wrong. There's something abnormal about you. There is nothing abnormal about that. It, it might be not normal to you and your friends, but it's not like inherently abnormal, like inherently, like what's inherently abnormal is like pushing people out of a window for fun and, and watching them die. Like that's abnormal, that's immoral. <laughs> or stealing things from your exes just because you just wanna take things back. You know, what? I'm just coming up with weird free associative examples. But anyway, we also hear this, this phrase from her, I don't believe in keeping gifts from your former partners believe it's like like it's a religion or something now hopefully she can navigate her way to the baseline of all this which is she is worried that he is going to leave her and she doesn't want any kind of reminder of that possible you know that possibly happening so and you know because as I will often say, the defense. So at baseline, I'm guessing, I'm speculative, I don't know, that for her, baseline, she's worried and hurt, okay? But instead of sticking with that feeling and communicating that feeling, giving him an opportunity to rise to the occasion, she is defended about that, probably because her relationships in the past indicated she could not trust people with that vulnerability. So she creates a defense to that, which is to get judgmental and angry and hostile, not super expressively angry, but to be hostile and to put someone down and to say, that's abnormal, that's weird, what's wrong with you? Even though she's doing it with a smile on her face, it's, you know, it's a hostile act, it's, it's mean. It's trying to say, you're, there's something, I'm right and you're wrong, is, is, is the message there. And that defense will push people away, will hurt their feelings, will make them feel misunderstood and ju judged for no reason, and then they pull away, and then you are dealing with a situation where you're losing someone that you're worried about losing. Ain't nothing in here. I've already seen how he is with Mallory, so it bothers me just a little bit. I need to know that I'm the only one who he wants to be with. Okay, good. So it's getting, and, and that makes total sense, and I've been saying this from the beginning. One, she has every reason to be questioning whether or not he truly loves her because he rejected her and proposed to Mallory <laughs> and she knew it and and she went for I don't know how many hours maybe days of mourning the loss of her love for Jarrett you know there was a period of time where she's like well it's over I'm sad maybe anger at him and then when Mallory said no to him he turns around and 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 you know, proposes to her. Now, things could work out, and I'd like to believe that Jarrett is aware of himself enough to know that this is a sincere proposal, because he did say he was like on the fence for either one of them. I mean, he wasn't truly on the fence because he did choose one. But anyway, um, so she has one, she has every reason to, to have a question mark, and that, and she could just state, she doesn't have to focus on his former partners. You know, we've seen this before, like with Gino and Jasmine, right? It's like, Jasmine, it's okay if you're insecure about the relationship, but focusing on like the paint in Gino's apartment is, and just railing about that is, you know, it, it's not gonna help. So, so one, totally. Two, they just met. So inherently you would have a lot of question marks there. They all, probably have question marks. They all should have question marks. So unless they're delusional or something. So it's okay to have that insecurity. It's okay to have that question mark. It's okay to like say, I am questioning whether or not he really wants to be with me. Just stick to that and just say, when I see that thing, it makes me question even more. Can you reassure me? Can you please get rid of this? Cause it's gonna, it's gonna aggravate me. It's totally fine. She could absolutely say, that's a deal breaker, you gotta get rid of that. 
But to judge him and say, I don't believe in this, like it's a religion, instead of, I have feelings, can you please help me with that, is, you know, I don't know how he's going to react to that. When are we going to work on this? In 2000? We said uh, we would revisit in a year. You really want to revisit in like three. My clock is ticking. I can't wait to have kids. Is that why you almost chose Mallory? Because she's more established and she can just have kids? They're talking about having kids. One, they're talking about whether or not to allow their kids to play football, which as someone myself that played football uh, throughout my childhood and played uh, middle linebacker and running back upon which there's a lot of head contact. And to the point where when I was growing up, no one cared about leading with your head. We had this uh, thing called spearing, which was rarely called. And I had many concussions and many spine injuries and j jaw injuries and hand injuries. I actually have a broken bone on my back that is just permanently broken from football. So I get as a parent not wanting your kid to play football for sure. Uh, really a lot of sport. I mean, soccer has a, a fair amount of injuries as well. So it's not, and, and concussions from headers or, you know, two heads hitting each other. So it's not like football is alone in that way. So, you know, sports like tennis, you're less likely to find that. Obviously, you know, anything that doesn't have a lot of content. Basketball actually is, from what I understand, less prone to like a lifetime sort of injury. You can break your knee and that kind of stuff. Anyway, point is, is that I get their concern. I, as a you know person in psychology, have been reading a lot of research regarding chronic brain injury and the long-term effects of that. People like Junior Seau and others who had severe personality changes past a certain age. You know, it's been a mild concern of mine. The research shows that you have an increased chance, but it's not. Get the way she's talking about it, it's like anyone who plays football is guaranteed to have a chronic brain injury problem later in life. And that, that's just not shown in the data. Does it increase your chances? Yes, absolutely. And like I said, I, it's not just brain injury, but I, I have several ongoing, I, I had surgery on my hand. I, I can't, I don't know if you can see this, but I can't, um, and this is my guitar playing hand, and I can't, uh, I had I had, had surgery all the way down my arm because I, I snapped a, a tendon from here and they had, anyway, point is, is that, Every day of my life, I'm reminded of <laughs> the uh, problems I went through as a kid. But I loved football, and it, and the the pros of playing were, for me anyway, in terms of the meaning of my life, it outweighed the cons. That the camaraderie, the the teamwork, the uh, putting yourself to the test, the trying hard, the um, having a, a, you know, being a good sport about it. most of the teams I was on, we didn't win very often. <laughs> and in fact, we almost always went like um, 30, we almost always won 33% of our games. I, one year I was on an undefeated team and that was just like, what world, what planet am I on right now? But anyway, the lessons that I learned on the football field with my, even during uh, practice um, are invaluable to me. And so I, I, for me, I consider it worth it. But as parents, I totally get it. The other thing that's happening right here is that they're talking about having kids. And so he's like, I, I want to, she's saying, well, let's revisit it. And so they're referring to another conversation that they've had off camera, I believe, where she's saying, you know, let's talk about it in a year about having kids. And, and he's like, I want to have kids right away. So we're going to get married. We're going to have kids. That's what I would want. And so... Instead of having that conversation between the two of them, she has triangulated Mallory in this moment. So obviously Mallory is very frequently on her mind, which would make sense, but why would you bring it up in this situation? Why not just say, okay, we can talk about the kids thing in a second, but we just have to talk about the fact that I, I still feel extremely insecure about whether or not you really love me. And I I'm, I guess what I'm asking is that I need you to reassure me that you really love me and you don't love Mallory because it's coming. It's, I'm frequently having that emerge for me. That would be totally fine and it would be normal. Instead, while they're talking about having kids, she's like, oh, I get it. Like Mallory wanted to have kids right away. Is that why you proposed to her? It, it, it puts him in the situation where, so I don't know. Let's see what he says. No. Mm -hmm. 
Sometimes I wonder like what was the difference between the two of us and I know she's more established than I am and I know like me it's a lot to take on someone who isn't as established and you have to support them more. Well that's interesting and again in these one-on-one -on -one interviews it's like yeah we'll just tell him. Just like sometimes I wonder if you still love Mallory. Sometimes I wonder if but she doesn't bring it to him. She she keeps it on the inside and then it comes out in these what I'm going to say passive hostile statements you know. He just, I think his way of dealing with these kinds of hostilities is, by the way, I really appreciate how organized he is in his uh, closet. <laughs> he has a lot of shoes, by the way, but they're all stacked up, you know, really nice. The it looks like they're all the same brand. And then all of his, you know, his shorts and his shirts. <laughs> I mean, even his shorts are hung. I mean, that's, that's taking it to a whole other level, but I, I and all the, all of his shorts are on the same <laughs> hanger, and then his shirts are in a different kind of a hanger. Like, I, I can I can dig that. Anyway, she's saying in the one-on-one -on -one interview, I'm I'm insecure now, and then she is expressing another insecurity. It's like I you know I know that Mallory is more established than I am, and I wonder if he doesn't want to be with me because I know that I'm a lot to take on. I, I mean, we haven't heard anything like that from him. And I doubt that he would say that. I don't, he doesn't seem like he's, he would be like, well, Mallory's earning more money. So I want to be with her. <laughs> like, I, I, I can't imagine that who knows, but so it, it, it just, it's heartbreaking to watch her suffer and not to give him an opportunity to rise to the occasion. And continue to push him away with her defenses. I'm having kids and I'm getting my master's at the same time. That's going to be a lot. Was that why you chose Mallory? I wonder if that's the difference between me and Mallory. Great. That is a very reasonable question. Ask him. <laughs> Give him a chance. Wow. OK, should we sit down? Come on. Yeah. yeah. Did you all didn't see each other at all. Mm -mm. You just communicated via a wall. speaker and a wall. <laughs> so did you That's interesting. I always wondered about that because the way they make it seem, there is no speaker. They can just hear each other. And I was wondering, do they have some sort of, you know, like when you go to the bank sometimes and they'll have that bulletproof glass, but there's a little bit of air around the, around this, you know, C curve around the side so that you can kind of hear them. I mean, often, especially with masks on, I'm just like, huh? I got my ear right up. <laughs> what do you say? So I wondered, because, you know, they have that padded wall and they have that light thing. But when they show them from above, there's a good, like, I don't know, like five feet between the pods. So I was like, how does that work? So we're hearing that they can hear each other through a speaker. <laughs> I, I would imagine that would be annoying because there's something about hearing someone's real voice. And do they have a really good mic and a really good speaker? So hmm, somehow that would make it more frustrating to me. And, and, and watching them, I, I feel frustrated for them. All right, well, that does it for that episode. Everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.